Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're gonna to take a look at the new items inside Photoshop 2020 that a photographer would actually use. Now, there are some other new features inside of 2020, but truthfully, they're things I'm never ever gonna use. So we're gonna take a look at some of the top features that a photographer will actually use. That will keep this video shorter and to the point. The first one we're gonna take a look at is a new way to zoom inside of Photoshop. So before, if you wanted to zoom, you need to come down here to the zoom tool. And if I wanted to look at this V73, I'd click and drag, and it's gonna let me zoom. And then I can move stuff around. Let's go back out here. So the new feature inside of Photoshop allows you to zoom into specific areas of your document. Now this is especially helpful when you have multiple layers. So down here, I have multiple layers inside this document. We'll bring this up a little bit and we'll bring this up a little bit. So we have multiple layers inside this document here. And let's say I want to zoom in to just this Photoshop. I'm gonna hold the Alt Option key on my keyboard and then I'm just gonna click and it's gonna zoom right into that aspect. So if I wanna come in, zoom into just this layer, once again, hold that Alt Option, click, and it's gonna zoom into that area. If I want just the V3, I'm going to Alt Option, click on that, and it's gonna zoom into that specific area. All right, the next feature is probably the most talked about tool inside of Photoshop, but not actually my favorite, but I'm not saying it doesn't work really well. It's just, I don't cut a lot of things out, so it's not something that I'll be using a whole lot, but that is called the object selection tool. And it's definitely a good tool, and you can tell it's a good tool because on my toolbar, I've actually given it its own spot the object selection tool would normally be nested inside of this with the quick selection tool and the magic wand. Now I have removed that. So if you're wondering how I removed that, I will show you. You're gonna come up here into edit and then go down to toolbar. And then once you're in toolbar, you can move items around. So here's the object selection tool. Actually, when I downloaded mine, it was over here in the extra tools. It wasn't even available. So I just drug it over here and to this side. Now, if I wanted it inside this, I could easily come over here, move it and nest it inside with the rest of those. But in this case, I want it to be its own little tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And that is your object selection tool. Before, when we wanted to select subjects out inside of Adobe Photoshop, you would go into the selection tool and then you could come up here to select subject and we'll go ahead and click that. The problem is when you have multiple subjects, Photoshop doesn't know which one you might wanna select out. In this case, let's say we just want this subject. Notice select subject picked all of them, which isn't bad, but we just want one specific one. So I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect. And let's come up here and first take a look at the toolbar to see what we kinda have inside the object selection tool. We have two different modes. One is lasso, and we're gonna start with rectangle, and then we'll go into lasso tool. We have the ability to sample multiple layers. In this case, we only have one layer, so we don't need to select multiple layers. It has an auto enhance button in which it's going to automatically enhance, and an object subtract in which it's gonna analyze the image in the case where right in here, where there's a little space in between under this kind of armpit right here, it's going to try to detect that and automatically subtract from it. It's gonna be reading the background. It's gonna see that value. It's probably gonna understand that that's gonna be a background and it's gonna to try to subtract with that. You can either turn that on or off. For right now, we'll just go ahead and leave that on since that's where it is on default. We can select subject just like we did and then we can go into select and mask. Now let me explain. This is just a selection tool. You are still going to need to use select and mask to go in and refine your selection. It does a better job of selecting now inside of Photoshop, but that has to go with select subject or any selection tool. 
They've just improved the AI of the program, which is the artificial intelligence and selection. But you still need to use Select and Mask to refine your selection to get a really accurate, nice selection. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to make a selection with the rectangle tool. So what this does is it lets us draw a rectangle around the area of the subject that we might wanna select. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll see if it's able to recognize. And it's done a really good job. Now right here, it hasn't automatically recognized that we wanna get that and it messed up that little area. But you can see that rectangle did a really good job of taking that out. Now we can subtract from the selection. So you can come up here, notice that we have to add to a selection and subtract from a selection. So if I wanna subtract, I'm gonna hold down my Alt Option key. I don't use those up there. And then I'm just gonna come in here and say, this is the area I don't want. And it's gonna to try to analyze it. And you can see it did a pretty good job. It's still got this little area. We can come and do another one. And eventually it's going to reduce and deselect that. But we're gonna hit deselect. The second method is a lasso tool. So the lasso tool is literally gonna let us draw around the subject and identify what we want to select. So I can draw around this and say that's the part that I want to select. And then right here, I want to subtract from the selection. So I'm going to draw around that. And that's going to help Photoshop analyze that and subtract from the selection. So we want to get totally rid of this. So I'll circle that. And you can see it's done a pretty good job. Now we still have this little area in here and some little messed up areas. And that's where by going into select and mask afterwards to refine your selection is definitely gonna be worth it. Just because we have a new selection tool and you can see the object selection tool is also located inside of select and mask. All right, so that is number two. That is the object selection tool inside of Photoshop. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is the new remove background, and that's nested inside of properties, which has been upgraded. So you will notice that properties has a whole lot more stuff than it used to. So I'm gonna take this layer and move it. So I'm gonna get my move tool over here, and I'm just gonna drag and come up over here to this layer, and then come in here and just kind of drop it around. And we'll say that right there is where we wanna drop this tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the new properties. And what I'm gonna do is bring this out so we can see this. It's quite a bit larger than it used to be. The properties is much larger and has a whole lot more information in it. And this is just a simplified version. There are aspects and you'll see that we'll take a look at that properties has more information than this. So we have some align buttons, but right down here we have this new thing called remove background. If I go ahead and I click remove background, it's going to quickly remove that background and let me see what this image is gonna look like over top of this image. Now we have some issues, right? So we've got some decontamination of the color of the pink background kind of getting into her hair. Obviously, anything that you need to do needs to have selected mask. And don't forget, you can always select a mask and then you can come up here and go to select and mask. And that will take you back into the select and mask and then allow you to sort of fix that. And right down here, we have some decontamination for colors and that's gonna help remove some of that pink that is in the thing. We could do the hair. We're not gonna get into that today because we've done video tutorials on how to do select and mask. So right now we're just gonna be taking a look at the new features. Once again, the way this works, you're going to Add a layer on top of a layer, make sure it is selected. You're going to click remove background and you're gonna easily see what the background is gonna look like with that image. That is the new remove background tool inside of Adobe Photoshop. The next tool that we're gonna take a look at is something new that's inside Photoshop. Now I have a whole bunch of files open, but let's say I only wanna work on this one now. I wanna close those files. We can come in here, select the file that we wanna work at, and then notice we have the new section called Close Others. I can hit Close Others, and it's gonna ask me if I don't wanna save them. And just like that, all those extra windows have been closed.
The next tool we're going to talk about is my favorite inside 2020. And this is sort of an odd one because most people would think it might be the fill or it might be the object selection. But in this case, it is something new and it's called gradients. Now we've always had these gradients inside of Adobe Photoshop, but they've never worked like this before. What you can see here is now we have a whole bunch of new gradients that were never there before. We have the basics, but then we have blues, purples, pinks, and so on. And how we can use these to colorize or tone images is absolutely wonderful. Let's say I don't like the mood the pink has given me in this image. I can simply come down here and we'll pick some blue. And I'm gonna grab this blue and I'm just gonna drop it right on top of her. And so this is gonna give me a blue gradient at 100%. We're gonna come over here and just drop down and change this to color. And you can see it's replacing the color with a gradient color. Now it's way too strong so we can lower the opacity of that gradient to something that we like. Now this is the best part of the feature. If we wanna see what the other colors look like, all we have to do is click on them. And it's automatically gonna use that gradient over here and we can colorize our image and it makes it really quick to kind of go through. Let's say we wanna check out and see what oranges look like. And we do a couple oranges, but we don't like the oranges. So we're gonna come down here and check out pastels. And then we come and we get this nice soft pastel and we really like this color. Just this one use in gradients is really, really gonna speed up trying to pick different colors to colorize images. You're also gonna be able to replace skin tones with this. It's absolutely a wonderful tool inside of Photoshop. All right, the last new tool we're gonna take a look at is the Content Aware Fill Tool. And it was new last time that Photoshop came out, but it's got a cool new addition to it. So what I'm gonna do is just make a selection. We're gonna say that we love this photo, but we don't like this person anymore and we want to remove them because we just want this nice landscape without a person in it. Once you have selected your subject, you're gonna come up to Edit, Content Aware Fill. And the way Content Aware Fill works is it's automatically picking an area that it thinks it should fill this area with. And in this case, it's done a really pretty good job. Anything in green is the area in which it's gonna fill this image. The next is rectangle in which it's just going to select the whole rectangle. And then the new addition over here is called custom. And this is going to allow us to select the area that we actually wanna fill this with. So in this case, I've got this little thing and it's telling me I need to use the sampling brush. And all I have to do is come in here and paint the area that I wanna fill from. So let's say it's just this one area right here. And it is going to fill, and we can see over here in this window, by using this area. And that did a pretty good job. Now it didn't pick up these flowers, but I think afterwards you will be able to come in and fill those flowers with that area. So we can go ahead and hit okay. And it's going to remove this area and fill in with just the area that we selected. Now, did it do the most perfect job? No, not in this case, but it is going to allow you to specify specific areas to fill images with. And just like anything in Photoshop, a lot of times it's not a one-step shop to fill in an area. You can use that content aware fill tool, but you're gonna need to go in there with some other type of brush, whether it's the clone stamp or the patch tool to kind of clean it up and make it look its best. That is what's new in Photoshop 2020. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and as always, don't forget to subscribe.